Hello and uh, thanks to Joe for putting this together. It's great that so many people are here to listen to what's going to be a great day. Um, so my research on playfulness was a little while ago now, but um, I've had time to reflect and I, I still strongly feel that in lives that are complex and health dominated, um, playfulness can be a, a pleasurable and also straightforward way to unlock and reinforce and reveal the strengths that children with PMLD have. So my focus is um, a very positive one. It's looking at what uh, children with PMLD can do and more specifically what they can do through playfulness. Um, but I also feel this obviously um, relates to adults as well and in fact I think given the times we're having we could all do with a bit more playfulness in our lives really and I remember when I met uh, Penny Lacey uh, sadly no longer with us um, she said to me that she thought a smile was the most important thing that you could teach a child with uh, profound impairments and I don't think she meant this in a mechanical way literally teaching them to smile but I think she uh, saw it as something that repre represents that joyful engagement that's so rewarding to both parties and that that has such beneficial effects as well. I think if you can find what makes a child light up then I think you're on a path to finding um, finding out so much about them, their character, their strengths and their interests and also their aversions, what they don't like. So in this uh, short presentation today, I'll quickly go through what I found to be the three main things that I think are most important when thinking about encouraging playfulness. And the first of those is observation. And I found this to be absolutely key to my research and it's, it's certainly where I found the most uh, positive and interesting findings, I think. Um, there also, there weren't many uh, methods open to me with this group of children, um, but I found face-to-face -face observation um, in either their classroom or their home or in a playful setting um, to be really key. Um, so I developed an observation schedule for it, which um, can be found on Joe's website. But I think just informal note taking or even just just looking is really useful. And several of the teachers and school staff and even and families as well said they'd love to have more time really just to sit and um, and look at what their children were doing. Um, that gets a bit lost in busy classrooms. And I think one example of how useful it was, was a child um, in a classroom setting where the teacher had set up this fantastic play activity in a gazebo with skittles. And it was, you know, it obviously took a lot of trouble to set it up. But the child I was observing was actually just more interested in knocking things off the uh, tray in front of her and getting the teacher to pick things up. And what made this interesting was that the teacher played along with it beautifully. She um, she got really engaged in the fun of it, making a, a big thing about what a nuisance it was to have to keep on picking these up and things up. And the child just loved it and was in a very responsive, very alert state. Um, and I suppose, you know, on one level, you could say that the activity hadn't really worked because she didn't engage with trying to knock a skittle over. But in terms of a playful interaction that was joyful and um, also had a lot of beneficial effects, I think, in terms of their relationship and um, just general feeling good. <laughs> um, I think then it certainly had worked, but it was certainly dependent on that teacher picking up and um, and engaging with the child in a, in a playful way and not perhaps being a bit fed up that the activity she spent a lot of time setting up hadn't worked. Um, and this really brings me on to my second point, which is about attitudes. Um, so it seems obvious, but if you don't think that a child with PMLD can be playful, 
or if you feel you're not a playful person so you can't do it then there's really little chance of playfulness occurring um, as it doesn't really seem to happen very often on its own in this group of children out of my observations um, there was something like 152 what I called instances of, of playfulness and about 130 of those were um, involving an adult as well. There were some that were peer peer led, but mostly it was another adult. So adults are really important to this group of children, obviously. Um, so I don't think playfulness requires you to be all wacky and leaping around. And in fact, that's um, probably not what a lot of children need. Um, what I found was that the attributes that were most often mentioned in um, to be needed in in someone that uh, to encourage playfulness were not really things that could be taught or have training for but they're really personality traits and the most important ones I think were being flexible being persistent being creative and not being afraid of being silly um, and importantly alongside this I think being genuine and knowing the children well were also really essential attributes. Um, so I think well, the one sort of slightly sad example of an attitude, a negative attitude affecting a child was in a school setting where the member of staff, um, knowing that the child's uh, diagnosis involved autism, um, he took this to mean that the, the child um, wasn't interested in other children. But um, again, through observation, it was really clear that the child was very interested in other children and uh, took a lot of um, effort to engage with other children, but this very often wasn't picked up on. Um, so I'm saying this not to be down on schools because I saw lots of amazing interactions that were very positive and beautiful, but um, to show really how playfulness can get lost amid labels, medicalization and, uh, and negative attitudes. So um, I think the third aspect that really needs to be focused on, which is also very tied to attitudes, is about creating the right environment. So it's obviously very hard to create a playful environment in a physical sense if the people in it don't feel that they have sort of permission to be playful or that they're, it's not approved of somehow and they should be doing something else, maybe more medical or so-called educational. Um, I know Jill Goodwin will be talking about her creating her um, wonderful golden tent and that's a lovely example of a beautiful space for playfulness to occur. Um, one that adults can really shift from from being, as she's from doing, as she says, to being with the child. Um, but trying to recreate that sense of connection can be difficult in a busy environment. But I think it's all about grabbing at playful opportunities. Um, people told me about how they would make you know, changing a nappy into a really playful time. Um, so it's it's about having the right attitudes, but also the right environment. Um, however, there were particular things that people told me about that could improve an environment to make it more likely that playfulness could happen. Um, so as somebody in my research said, you could have the most playful person in the world, but in the wrong environment, it doesn't come out. So, and vice versa. So you can bring out playfulness in people who aren't very playful by putting them in the right context. So forgive me if these things seem obvious, but I shall just uh, run through a few aspects that came out strongly in the research. So for the child, it seems to be important that they can have good eye or other contact with the person that they're interacting with. They need to have some control over their environment. So it's really good if they're able to reach out and, and touch things or, or move things if, if they're able to. Um, a sort of adaptation to scale might be needed. For example, a large 
box might be a good place to play in rather than being in a large classroom that can be quite overwhelming for some children. And I think, again, through observation, if a child responds or seems to respond well to a place, then keep going there and, um, and see what happens. And again, this might be quite obvious, but the child needs to be comfortable and maybe out of their wheelchair. But um, and I think I naively thought, yes, of course, they're going to play better out of their wheelchair. But that's not always the case. Sometimes children need to be supported or to be able to be in a position where they can see things more easily, obviously. And that would depend on the activity. And I think it's important to explain an environment to the child in whatever way suits them. That might not always be easy or appropriate, but it's important. Um, it came out as important during the research. And for the adult, when they're thinking about um, creating a nice environment to be playful in, <clears throat> it seems that the environment should neither be overly structured or over, overly stimulating and chaotic. So some sort of happy medium in between seems to work well. So there's a bit of flexibility there. Um, and attention also needs to be paid to temperature, light and noise. And it's useful to have areas that create different moods. So you can move from one part of the room to the other, uh, depending on the mood of the child. And a lot of people told me how important it was to use nature, using natural objects and also outdoor space. But this seems to provoke playful responses in children. Um, and the space can be really enhanced by sensory items such as lights, water and music. Um, it needs to be enough, there needs to be enough space so that children can reach out and interact with other children as well. And that's, I observed that quite a lot, the children just sort of rolling around on a mat and reaching out to each other provoked lots of really playful responses. Um, and children might actually need some physical preparation for playfulness. They might need some massaging or positioning um, to make it possible. I, there was one family where the mother would take perhaps 20 minutes or so to get their child in the right position to be able to be playful, to then be able to look at an iPad and touch the screen and amazing things happen. So, um, I would also say that it seemed like if the, a child was in quite a sort of mixed environment where there were children that were running around and playing in a in a more um, in a very natural way, then that can also be really stimulating and playful. Children that are always with other children with PMLD perhaps miss out on looking at other children um, and seeing what they're doing. So, uh, so I think it's not complicated, really. I think it's vitally important that we don't lose sight of play sight amongst uh, playfulness amongst uh, targets, medical interventions, and other very necessary but not very joyful things. And I haven't really gone into here why I think playfulness is so important. But I did find in my very small study, which I'd love somebody to take up and <laughs> replicate on a big scale, um, it showed that the more actively playful children were, then the more strengths that I observed in them. And I, I observed about 18 different strengths, and I'm sure there were lots more, but um, things like making eye contact, concentration, being able to indicate more or, or no more, um, were things that were far more prevalent in children who were more actively playful. So um, it seems like that wasn't actually linked to the level of their impairment. It was to do with how playful they were able to be during the day. Sadly, um, one of the children in the study had a very um, unplayful home environment and it was really striking how different his levels of playfulness were 
at home and in school and there's also an example of the other way around as well so I think it's less to do with impairment and it really is to do with how much we can work at um, creating playful environments for these children. So being playful it might actually increase a child's ability to do things. I think it's very hard to pinpoint that but I think there's indications that that is the case and I think perhaps even more importantly it just makes them feel good and it makes the people around them feel good. Um, so it, this comes on to me just talking a little bit about the play passport that I developed um, with professionals and parents during the study which I think is in the file section of this group. Um, I feel it's quite useful as a, a tool just to really focus on what makes a child playful and what makes them feel good. Um, it's again nothing complicated <laughs> um, but I hope people found it useful. Um, so by bringing together careful observation, positive attitudes and the right physical and, and emotional conditions. I think that playfulness can really bring a child a light and um, can also create a fun and happy atmosphere around. And thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.